What's up everybody? Today on Dirt Lifestyle, we're gonna talk about one of the most loved and one of the most hated axles on the internet, and that's the Dana 44. My experience with this axle has been outstanding, but it's on the right build, it's on the right size tire, and it's got the right parts in order to make it a good, strong, reliable component of my rig. I've beat on this Jeep in every type of terrain there is. Snow, mud, rocks, sand, it doesn't matter. Nothing can kill this thing. I actually have a Dana 60 high pinion sitting in my shop. It's been here for a while. Just in case I blow up the Dana 44, then I'll be able to start building this Dana 60, but it can't be killed. I've ran through multiple engines. I've had the Jeep four liter and I've had my turbo diesel. Neither one can seem to kill this thing. I have an Atlas transfer case so I can do front digs, meaning that the rear axle doesn't help at all. You're literally just in front wheel drive to try and correct your stance on an obstacle. Even with an air down 40 doing a front dig, this thing will not explode. For years, I thought this Dana 44 will not die until now. Check this out. See how both front tires are spinning the same direction? The locker is off. I have the switch off. There is no CO2 in the lines or anything like that, and it is fully locked. That's not supposed to do that. The tires are supposed to spin the opposite direction when the locker isn't engaged. I've actually, I've wheeled with it on four trips in this condition. I've, I broke it a while back. It works, I just keep wheeling on it, you know, like smart people do. <laughs> now I have time to pull the cover off and see what the hell's going on. All right guys, this is gonna be hard to see. There's some shavings right there. I'm changing the focus on the camera so you can see down in there. Those are not metallic, those are plastic, which means that I ruptured something on the inside of the locker. For those of you who are watching this video and you're new to wheeling, I want you to understand that broken lockers are not that big of a deal. It does suck, it's inconvenient, but this is not uncommon. Anytime you have a mechanical mechanism like that inside of an axle, it just will wear out over time. I mean, it's just the way it is. All the chromoly pieces, which is basically all the moving parts that are inside the locker, still look great from the outside. I imagine all that happened is that the plastic diaphragm that's in it that actually makes it lock together is probably ruptured or something like that. We'll know when I take it to Yukon and we take it apart, but don't let this scare you away from getting a locker or don't let this scare you away from getting Yukon especially because this thing has lasted almost five years and for me, that's actually pretty dang good. I've seen broken lockers in corporate 14 bolts. I've seen broken lockers in Toyota axles. I've seen broken lockers in just about everything. So this doesn't really reflect Yukon or the Dana 44 at all. I wanted to start this video off by showing my honest experience with the Dana 44. And you just saw the first issue I've had with it since ownership. I mean, this thing has been sound. I've had no issues over all the years. Been very fortunate. I do front digs. I have plenty of wheel hop. Uh, I, I am not nice to this thing. It goes to multiple states. I, I'm really hard on it, but it just seems to hold together for me. So when do you need to upgrade to a Dana 60? Well, if I started breaking this, there is two roads I can take, believe it or not. I could upgrade to a Dana 60 and I could put a nice big heavy duty one ton front end in the front of this Jeep. But the way my front axle is built, it's not the end all be all for a Dana 44. If you do a little research, you will see there's a whole bunch of ways to upgrade this axle and make it even stronger than a Dana 60 in some areas. We're gonna start small and we're just gonna talk about brakes real quick. One reason you would upgrade to a Dana 60 over 44 is maybe you're really heavy and you have a hard time stopping. Well, there's a bunch of different options if you have this axle. This axle is out of a 1976 F-150 and if you wanted to stop harder, you could upgrade the knuckles to an F-250 knuckle and then you can use the F-250 brakes. The F-250 brake calipers are actually dual piston calipers. Um, I'm sure they're real stout. They're, it's definitely gonna stop better than what the F-150 does. This is not an issue that I have because my rig is so light, but it's one reason that people would want a one ton axle is if you've got big tires and you've got a heavy rig, it might be hard to stop. The second reason to upgrade to a Dana 60 over a 44 would be axle shafts. If you're breaking axle shafts, the easiest way to make it stronger would be to go to a Dana 60, right? Because it's a bigger axle shaft. Instead of a 30 spline axle shaft on the inside, it's gonna be a 35 spline axle shaft on the inside. But the strongest axle shafts that I know of are RCVs. RCV makes axle shafts for a whole bunch of different makes and models. They are not cheap, but they are not weak. If you want something that's reliable and you don't wanna break down in the middle of nowhere, RCVs are outstanding. And because of the material type they use, these axle shafts are actually stronger than a Dana 60 axle shaft. I have seen this in person multiple times now. And actually when I was on trail to SEMA, we had a whole bunch of people with Dana 44s that were on 40s, none of them broke. We had two people that were on Dana 60s on 40s 
and they broke axle shafts because they were stock axle shafts. It's definitely not uncommon. And when you go with an RCV, you get to get rid of the weak spot, which would be your U joints and replace them with a CV joint. The CV joint actually makes it to where it's 100% strength all the way up to a 45 degree angle, meaning that you can turn your wheel all the way over and you're not gonna lose any strength. It's pretty awesome. With a U-joint, every degree you turn it, you are slowly losing strength in that joint, making it to where it doesn't matter what size axle it is, you can break it and get stranded in the middle of nowhere or break it, have to pull it apart, limp it home. It sucks, you don't wanna break it. <laughs> you wanna have reliability and RCV is one way to get it. The third reason to upgrade to a Dana 60 out of a 44 would be your ring and pinion. If you're blasting through ring and pinions and you're having problems with your ring and pinions, then it's probably time to upgrade. Although there is other ways to upgrade besides doing the Dana 60. There's a company called Jantz Engineering and they're actually up here not too far from me and they make some really interesting stuff. You can do what's called a Jana 54. The Jana 54 makes it to where you can take a Dana 50 ring and pinion and you can shoehorn it in the Dana 44 housing like what I have. So the F-150 housing or F-250 housing from 1976 to 1979, you can take the larger ring and pinion put it in there and it says right here, it makes it 44% stronger. And that's not 44% stronger because you're using a special type of ring and pinion or anything. It's literally just a larger ring and pinion that you're fitting into the same housing. Pretty incredible. I think this is a great option, but there is something I do think it's better. This is the Jana K4 kit. The Jana K4 kit makes it where you can put JK Dana 44 ring and pinions into the older Dana 44 axle housing. This is awesome because the JK Dana 44s actually have a larger ring and pinion than the older F-150s and F-250s. But there's all these reasons you don't want one of the newer JK Dana 44s. The axle housings are terrible as I will show you here. They bend, they break, they're really thin, they're small in diameter. They are, they're not good housings. And their issues don't stop there. They bend their knuckles, which is unique to JKs. I don't know why. <laughs> I guess they're just really thin. They're fragile for whatever reason. They also bend inner C's. So you can just avoid all those problems. You can get the best of both worlds and basically build a hybrid Dana 44 with this kit, making it to where you can have, that says approximately 44% stronger ring and pinion, which 44 is a lot. That is a lot more strength over stock. Keep in mind, the Dana 44 high pinion out of an F250 came in a big heavy truck that had a big block. There are lots of big horsepower, big blocks out there that are still using those Dana 44 high pinions. I've seen them. They're not having problems ripping ring and pinions out of these things. So they're strong in stock form. If you make them 44% stronger, you can definitely swap an LS into your JK if you set it up like this and not have a problem with your ring and pinion. Go ahead and look in the comments. Lots of people are gonna disagree with me, but these came in a big heavy F-250 stock and then they lasted. I mean, honestly, they're, they're a lot stronger than you would think they are. Add 44% on top of that. You're gonna get a really strong ring and pinion. So here's the full recipe to what I think is the most bulletproof Dana 44 front end that you can build. And that would be the housing from a 1976 to 1979 F-150 if you wanna go 65 inch uh, width, or if you wanna go wider than that, you can do the F-250 version, same years. Load it up with the JK ring and pinion. And the reason I'm choosing the JK ring and pinion over the Dana 50 ring and pinion is because there's lockers they make for the JK that I haven't seen for anything else. You can get a 35 spline locker for the JK. So now you have the larger ring and pinion from the JK, making it 44% stronger, and you can load it with a thicker axle shaft. 35 spline, does that ring a bell? That's the same size axle shaft as a Dana 60. So now you have Dana 60 sized axle shafts in your axle, and if you do RCVs, and they make custom lengths and sizes and all kinds of stuff, whatever you need to build, you can slide in a set of RCVs, now you've eliminated the U-joints, and it has the same size stub shaft as a Dana 60, because they're only gonna sell it to you with a 30 spline stub. So now your axle shafts are the identical thickness as a Dana 60, but because of their material type and everything else, your Dana 44 is far superior to a Dana 60 when it comes to the axle shafts. Keep in mind, I have never blown apart a ring and pinion, and I am hard as hell on mine. So adding 44% strength to that, I think that you could definitely have a JK with an LS swap, and you're never gonna have to worry about that ring and pinion. Now, if you put like nitrous and all kinds of crazy stuff on there, expect things to, to go awry, but that could happen with a Dana 60 too. You would definitely need a Dana 60 if you're gonna have like, I don't know, 500 plus horse probably. But I would say if, you know, it's a, a normal, just like a six liter or 5.3 LS with maybe a cam, 
I would never be worried about that front end that we just talked about. It's a really, really strong recipe for a front axle. I wanna be super clear. There are a bunch of great reasons to own a Dana 60 and I'm not in any way a Dana 60 hater. In fact, you will see me swapping one tons into one of my projects in this shop this year. Whenever we get there, you'll, you'll know why. But this video is all about the Dana 44. So we're gonna talk about four really good reasons to keep your Dana 44 or to build a Dana 44 instead of a Dana 60. Reason number one would definitely be the fact that it is light and it is small. It is smaller, meaning that you get more clearance than you would with the Dana 60. And it's lighter, meaning that it weighs less than the Dana 60. Both are really good attributes, especially whenever you're trying to build something that can go over everything. You don't want it to be super, super heavy. You want it to be as light as possible so you can slip and slide right over your obstacles. Reason number two is that Dana 44 is cheaper. There are some insane priced Dana 60s out there. There are some pretty expensive Dana 44s as well, but I mean, I've seen bare housings for Kingpin Dana 60s that are over a thousand bucks, which is ridiculous. I've bought two different Dana 44 high pinions out of late 70s F-150s for about a hundred bucks a piece. Reason number three, the Dana 44 is upgradable, meaning that you don't have to buy something that is way overkill because you wanna put your rig on 35s. So if you wanna upgrade to 35s on your JK now, you can build an F1, a 76 F-150, same axle that I have. You don't necessarily have to upgrade a whole lot of stuff and basically just weld your brackets and a decent truss on it, and you're good for now. And then whenever you do decide to do 40s in the future, you can just outfit this thing with all the strongest parts you can find and make it a really nice, strong axle that you'll grow into over time. The last reason, which is more just like a bonus, you get selectable hubs if you build an Ultimate 44 like this. You're not reusing any of your existing hubs or anything like that. What's nice about that is if you do break on the trail or something like that, you can just turn that side off if you have a broken shaft. If like, let's say you haven't upgraded to RCVs yet. Another nice thing is that you can turn them off whenever you're on the street and you can actually pick up a couple MPG if that matters to you. If you liked what you saw today and you wanna see more, tell me in the comments and leave me a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've got a whole bunch of how-to stuff and then some more informational stuff like this. I'm also starting to get more into action adventure type stuff off on the trail too. We have a website, thedirtlifestyle.com if you want to get shirts, hats, stickers, things like that. We also have a Patreon page. And if you wanna follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.